At a certain picnic, each of the guests was served either a single scoop or a double scoop of ice cream. How many guests were served a double scoop of ice cream? So I created these two variables, n to be the total number of guests, and x to be the number who got a double scoop. So x is what the question is ask, actually looking for, but we suspect that n is going to be helpful in answering this question as well. So statement number one tells us, at the picnic, 60% of the guests were served a double scoop of ice cream. So in other words, x equals 60%, written as a decimal, 0. 0.6 times n. Well, that's interesting. If we know n, we can find x and vice versa. Unfortunately, we don't know either of them at the moment. So at the moment, this is insufficient. But it is an awfully useful formula, and we suspect it may come in handy a little bit down the road. Now, we have to completely forget about statement number one and focus exclusively on statement number two. Statement number two tells us the total number of scoops is 120. And if you think about that, the total number of scoops, well, what is that? That would be two scoops for everyone who got a double scoop. So that would be 2x plus 1 times everyone who got a single scoop. Well, those people would be n minus x. And here is an equation. We have a single equation here, but we have two variables. And when you have two variables, two unknowns and only one equation, that is insufficient to solve. So right now, because we don't know n or x, we cannot solve, and this is insufficient. But now, we combine these statements. And what I'm going to do now, because we know both this and this, I'm going to take the equation from statement number two, but everywhere where there's an x, I'm going to substitute 0.6n plus, and then n minus 0.6n would be 0.4n. So the 60% who got a double scoop and the 40% who got a single scoop and all these scoops together add up to 120. Well, now we could solve for n. And I'm not actually going to go through the steps and find the numerical value of n. It's enough to know that we could solve for n. We have one equation and one unknown. And once we find n, we can use this equation to find x. So at this point, we have sufficient information to answer the question. The statements combined are sufficient, and the answer is c.